It's that time again. It's time for another Saturday night special where we talk about everything rock hounding related. Well, what a fabulous week I had. I received some lovely specimens in the mail. I had a very interesting conversation with, well, some artificial intelligence that I would love to share with you, although that I'm calling it that might be an overstatement. And, uh, well, I finished up my Arbor build. Hopefully you saw that video. Um, the Arbor has been amazing to have. Um, I'm kind of still doing stuff in batches out here in the shop. Uh, and currently the belts that I have, they only go up to, well, here's a thousand grit silicon carbide. They're only going up to 1200. I have a 1200 belt here. So, uh, I've wanted to do some, uh, more kind of higher gloss polishing so i will be getting some additional belts in the mail so but currently um you know i've just kind of been working with it and taking some of these uh things up to a 1200 and haven't taken them over to the cerium oxide wheel just yet but man i gotta i gotta say uh it is so nice to have my first um real set of wheels it's a uh, been a long time <laughs> it's been a long time where i've been making do without you know so to have something uh completely i'm looking forward to polishing these right these aren't polished like they're just i guess preliminary getting ready to be polished um but i want to uh have some other belts for things like this like um where i don't want to take it to my cerium oxide wheel um but man uh that was a uh, challenging, challenging project for me, and uh, it took a very long time. And uh, <laughs> um, I think I'm good on uh, big projects, at least for a little bit. You know, uh, we are slowly, slowly starting to see some nicer weather, and I don't really want to start a giant machine build, but that doesn't stop me from daydreaming. That doesn't stop me from finding interesting machines out there uh on on the internet that i use as inspiration and I, I save all these pictures to a folder um over on the rock tumbling hobby forum somebody posted a link to a craigslist ad with this machine now this machine is very cool looking um it's an import uh i believe made in taiwan uh and it is set up for me grinding polishing metal i think grinding metal but just to look at the housing, it also has a VFD, so variable frequency drive. Uh, but I look at things like this for inspiration for things that I might be able to do myself, which uh, is very cool um, just to kind of see how other people have designed stuff. I definitely want to do a couple more machine builds um, and uh, maybe I'll start planning planning for uh winter 23 24 <laughs> get all my stuff together you know uh but in the meantime uh, i'm just gonna keep working with my arbor keep learning you know uh and, and enjoying it um this week as well i finished this book <laughs> It's a, it's a hefty one, um, this book on mineralogy. And uh, it was, um, I, normally I can just rip through a book um, and retain all of it like 100%. That's like my one gift in life, my ability to memorize stuff. Um, but even with this one, it was a little bit of a struggle to get through it. Um, but I'm very glad that I did. I learned a lot about uh, optical mineralogy. Uh, for somebody like myself who is not <clears throat> not a chem I'm not a chemist I'm not a chemistry guy you know I never took a chemistry class to have somebody kind of break down some of those concepts in a very clear uh, concise manner is very was very very nice so I would 100 percent recommend mineralogy for amateurs um, if you uh, really want to get in deep into it like half the book though is descriptive mineralogy which is still good uh, generally um, it's nice to at least have the photos like as you go through like a older book 
with black and white photos and they get into descriptive mineralogy, uh, I'm a big fan of looking at high quality photos online as well. You know, like, I mean, that's just not good. That's not good enough in my opinion. I mean, better than nothing. I mean, 1964, um, you got to put it into that context. But, you know, uh, when it comes to identifying and mineralogy and stuff, we really need to be looking backwards. You know, uh, as much as I would like uh, all the advanced pieces of tech for identifying, those are definitely out of reach for this guy. So that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Um, look back before we had all that stuff. That's what, you know, what I learned from. Next on deck is something that uh, I'm really looking forward to reading. And uh, I got a uh, supplement to the Mineralogical Record. It's their Refined Elegance. Um, so this is all about thumbnails, micro mounts. Uh, I don't, well, actually not micro mounts, but thumbnails mostly, like thumbnails, little tiny things. So I'm going to probably burn through this quite quickly. Um, stay tuned the next saturday night special we'll probably be talking a little bit about that um and if you're not familiar with what thumbnails are well i received a couple of cabinet specimens this week and a couple of beautiful thumbnails so first off uh, i didn't get a chance to take photos of this under the microscope but i plan on doing that this week um this is a lovely piece of Ciderite that John sent me. Thank you very, very much. And uh, all of the that brown kind of like druzy coating is little blades of ciderite, which is very cool. He also sent me, knowing that I love zeolites, this uh, lovely specimen where we have some basalt, and that is a piece of anal seam. These are from Washington, by the way. And he also sent me two mounted thumbnails in perkies. That's what you call these boxes. That's a perky. Look at that. Very, very cool. Very happy to have these in the collection. Look at that. Beautiful. That'll look amazing under the microscope. I think there's a lot of value to be had in looking towards some of these smaller specimens. You know, the reality is, um, if you really do mineral collecting, rock collecting long term, you're, uh, you, we don't have infinite space. So to kind of minimize, have interesting specimens, um, you can uh, have a very big and diverse collection without having, you know... Uh, a giant museum of rock in your house, which that's very cool to have. And, you know, from purely a collecting standpoint, thumbnails, excellent. Uh, generally, you don't have to only enjoy the, that size with a microscope. Like, you can just visually enjoy them with your eyes. You can have a big, diverse collection, and they can be very affordable. Like, if you're in... If you want to buy minerals, Buying things that are thumbnail size, well, you can be done very affordably. Like if let's say you had a budget of $20 a month and you wanted to start a mineral collection going this route, um, you can have in a couple of years a very significant collection of interesting top tier uh, specimens that you can look at and enjoy. Um, there's a lot of people on Etsy and eBay and real life that uh, deal in specimens of that size. So that's something maybe, uh, you know, you look into. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Well, the conversation. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, I have seen in the past two weeks now a large number of uh, people online, Facebook, different places, being like, artificial intelligence is so amazing. I have learned so much about rocks and minerals. I have learned uh, places to go uh, 
rock hounding and just all this great stuff. It's so amazing. I can use chat GPT. I can use Bing chat and just be like, where can I go find beautiful crystals? And it just tells me where to go find beautiful crystals. And I get such strong rock identification app vibes from this because the people that proclaim how excellent it is don't know enough to know how little they actually know or when they're being deceived. And boom, I have a printed out conversation that I had with uh, this galaxy brained chat GPT. And I asked it a very simple question, the simple question that you might see in a Facebook group. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Spokane, Washington is in Eastern Washington. Uh, it's the second biggest city here in Washington state, USA. And I simply asked it, I'm gonna do a little paraphrasing here. Does the Spokane River have agates in it? And it said, yes, the Spokane River is known to contain agates. Agates can be found in various locations along the river, particularly in the area between Post Falls, Idaho and Spokane, Washington. The agates in this area are typically small, but they can be quite colorful and popular among rock hounds and collectors. Really, because there is that many agates in the Spokane River. Zero, none, zero. So that's interesting that it makes this very definitive, uh, objective statement. I simply asked it, where did you get that information? Because we, you know, we, we don't, there are no agates out here. Um, I obtained that information from various sources, including geology websites and rock hounding guides. The Spokane River is a popular location for rock hounds in the Pacific Northwest region, and many people have reported finding agates there. No, no, they have not. There is a couple of like cruddy Facebook posts where people confusingly show blurry, bad photos of quartzite, and they're like, agates, no, no agates, none, zero. So that's interesting. I responded with, you said the Spokane River is known to contain agates. Agates can be, I, you know, I quoted it back. Um, I want to know the exact source for that information. It then uh, listed three places. It said rock hunting guides and websites that provide information on locations to find agates in the Pacific Northwest, such as Gem Trails of Washington, Gem Trails of Washington, and... Uh, uh, rock Hounding Idaho, a guide to 99 of the state's best rock hounding sites. Uh, reports and observations from individual rock hounds who have searched for agates in the Spokane River and shared their findings and so on, on online forums and social media groups. And then information uh, from local rock and mineral clubs in the Spokane area, such as the Spokane Rock Rollers Club. Well, um, no, that is all entirely fabricated and it's making these very objective statements which is i find very interesting uh, i asked it what are the exact websites you referenced in your last statement on point one this is good stay with me here right so it gave me a list of websites uh northwest geological society pacific northwest mineralogical society Rock Hounding Washington, Rock Hounding Idaho. All four of those links are not real. Like they just, they go to broken, uh, they're broken URLs and they did never are never a thing. And it's like, hey, these are broken, um, broken links. And then they just slightly modified them with some additional letters and then re-sent uh, them to me. And then it said, while I cannot provide specific you know, uh, while I can't provide specific scientific study or a report on agate occurrences in the Spokane River, the information I provided is based on variable, uh, a variety of credible sources and is widely accepted within the rock hunting and mineral collecting communities. Like now it's, the, it's like, hey, I'm right. I'm right. I'm the, I'm the correct AI, but I'm going to keep pushing it. I said, everything you said is 100% incorrect. I have the books, I have these books, and they contain no information whatsoever about agates in the Spokane River, which they do not, because we don't have any. And then it said, thank you for bringing this to my attention. I apologize for any confusion or misinformation that I may have caused. 
Upon further research, I have not been able to find any definitive sources or reports that suggest that agates are commonly found in the Spokane River. Really? Really? This is our galaxy-brained AI here. Where it was like, nope, they're there, they're there, go here, everybody. Agates, 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 agates. And then I'm like, press it, and it finally admits it. Oh, it was, it was lying, it was lying. And this is why we do not depend upon artificial, intelligent, chatbot garbage for education around rocks and minerals, you know? Um, I had, this is not an outlier, right? I had many conversations with these things, testing many of these, and they all make giant, giant critical errors. Um, what, one, I was like, uh, tell me about significant zeolite discoveries made in Washington State. And it's talking about Goebel, Washington. The city of Goebel is in Oregon. And it's saying that it's next to Cheney, Washington, which Cheney is outside of Spokane, so like 300-ish, 320 miles apart. Doesn't even understand the basics. Um, but people are leaning hard on this crutch, and it is a giant, giant mistake. Um, you know, I know enough about these topics to uh, know when it's wrong. So when you ask it questions, it's not helpful if you, if you can see through it, you know. I was asking it questions about crystal structure, which you think would be something that it should be able to very easily like look up on like Wikipedia or Mindat or any number of resources. Crystal structure has been well known and established and printed in many various places, websites, articles, you name it. Uh, I don't know, like the... 1880s, you can find stuff online where they're talking about crystal structure. And it's just terrible. It makes so many mistakes. Well, that was my, uh, my, my last time of ever uh, playing around with uh, the supposed artificial intelligence. Um, it's just, it's, it, it sucks. It sucks. End of story. <laughs> time to get back into reality and get back into uh actual actual things um you know uh what else what else this coming week um i have a very fun video fun for me at least i know not everybody's into the lapidary blade videos but i love it i love nerding out about lapidary blades and we're gonna be doing a little bit of that this coming week so stay tuned for that that's coming on wednesday I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening to what I have to say, and I will catch you in the next video.